Good morning. 12 p.m. On a Monday. 12 p.m. on a Monday. Is everybody awake? This is my um, one live of the week that I can schedule these days. So I'm always on on Monday at 12 p.m. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. I will do another live this week, just like I did last week. It will probably be Thursday, but I can't promise for sure. Um, I can't schedule my second live of the week. So if you catch it, great. If not, it will be on YouTube. I take up questions on whatever you are in your reality creation journey, in where you are in your paradigm shift. And I also take up elements from my email, my group, questions and answers, tips and tricks on how to maybe accelerate your journey. I'm just going to give everybody about a moment to join. I have to drop off at like 12.55 today because I have a an appointment at 1.30, so I want to make sure I make it on time. Um, and what I want to talk about is um, a few admin items first. So my group has Dream Time this Wednesday. And I haven't put up that chat, but I will later tonight about um, the European group, the people from Europe, because they can dream with us at 1130. They, um, I'm going to create that chat that you guys agree upon an hour where you two, where you enter a dream time together. So Europe is ahead by six, seven hours, depending on which country you're in. Uh, maybe even eight hours if you're in Turkey. And um, I'm not sure, though. Don't quote me on that. And then um, as we're dreaming from here, Right as you guys are going to sleep, you're gonna catch us still in in dream time. I believe, I believe that's how timing works. <laughs> I'm not sure. I gotta do that calculation again in my head. But there will be, I think, that one hour if you sleep eight hours a night, and if we do it 11:30 our time, and you do it 11:30 p.m. your time, we should have an overlap of about an hour or so. Um, you know, I so I just want to make sure you guys know that. I want to talk again about scammers. Uh, guys, please know that every creator you follow, if they have maybe more than 10,000 followers, they will have scammer accounts that look just like them. They steal their videos. That's why I made my videos non-downloadable. Um, I don't contact anybody. So if you get a message from me, it's not from me. Um, uh, I don't offer any services. If you need me, you have to contact me with the link is in the bio. You can send me an email. I only have one product for sale, which is a 60 day challenge, which we all love so much. And then, you know, personal coaching for whoever's doing that and wants, wants to take it a bit more to the next level. Uh, but I don't contact. So be, be careful in general about the emails you get. Is it from the person that you think it is? I would always, you know, I get so much spam from banks. You know, oh, you got this deposit, you got this deposit, you know, like impersonators of banks. It's out of control. I think I get that like twice a day nowadays. I don't know if you guys have the same experience. We got to be careful. You know, this world where everything looks like it could be something with AI, especially. And it's it's pretty scary. But anyways, we don't worry about that. Just be careful. Uh, so dream time. The we're going to have a weekly challenge. OK, we're going to have a weekly challenge this week. So this is what I did. I was on TikTok uh, late at night, one night. I, I think it was maybe like three days ago. And they had this video. Oh, it's a filter. Which which dog would you be if you were a dog? I thought that was so funny. I'm like, let me see. I'm not really a dog person. I'm like, let me see what dog I would be just for fun. OK, so then I am telling myself at, at uh, today's meeting, I want to ask everybody to manifest this dog. I don't know what this is. You guys can tell me what kind of dog this is. Um, I don't know its name. <laughs> That's me with a dog face. Maybe I do look like this dog, but this is the manifestation of the week and you have to see it this week. And you know, it's really, really crazy. So you can see the timing on this was like 11, 1138 at night or, or something. But as I park this car right now, and I was like, I'm going to give them the dog challenge. I kid you not. Okay. You can't, I didn't want to really take a photo, but next to my car, there he is. Okay. Like we, we know, right? Like we know this is how it happens. And I was like, okay, so you can see the date of this photo is like from right now at the 11, 11. <laughs> I'm like, I love when the universe talks to me and it's so serendipitous. So nobody knows what kind of dog that is. Let's see. 
this will be your manifestation. I'll put it in the Facebook group. So you have to manifest this dog into your experience before the end of the week. Let's do it, guys. So we haven't had a group exercise in a while. And we're going to have the dog this week. And next week, depending on the results, I want to set it again to money and a monetary uh, um, sum. Okay. Nobody knows. A Frenchie? A Frenchie? French bulldog? <laughs> I think it's so cute, you know? Like, I, I wouldn't get one, but I think it's cute. I don't know. Do I look like it? Maybe. Maybe. All right. So uh, weekly challenge, we talk dream time. If you're doing the 60 day challenge, I have a really cool testimonial for you guys today. So this is from somebody who wants to remain anonymous, but who has written to me by email. And this was, you know, it says accidental manifestation of $50,000. So I'm just going to read it out. So she says, hi, Mona, I'm back again with another success story. I restarted the 60 day challenge in the middle of January with updated financial goals. I had zero savings in January and my goal was to have at least 5,000 in savings. A few days after making this declaration, my teeth just broke and fell off. I'm only 25, so I was scared. Turns out the grind my sleep and I had to fix a lot of teeth. And ironically, my cat was told at the vet that she would have to undergo an expensive uh, tooth surgery as well. My point is I suddenly had to pay a lot of money I didn't have to fix a health issue on top of unimaginable pain. So remember, when you're manifesting money, the immediate manifestation is of the opposite. A lot of people have this effect, right? It's like I'm manifesting money, but something broke in my house or my something happened to my tooth or I got to spend this extra money that I wasn't anticipating spending. This is a very, very common thread. And but because she's been with our group, she, she was relatively calm about it. So do not you must ignore the circumstance and keep on the path that you're manifesting money. Okay, this is very important when you see the opposite. So she says, the point is I always, I had to pay a lot of money. This news came right after I had booked and paid for my destination wedding. I try not to freak out because this is a pattern. Whatever I decide to change something, manifest something, I always experience some sort of chaos and falling apart of my old life. And I just have to weather the storm. So she, this has happened to her before. She was in awareness before. She kind of understood it's a pattern that the universe shows you the opposite. I practice non-reaction through all this, she says. I was listening to your lives and just kept my attention on my goals. I did, as you said, in your lives. I didn't focus on the amount I just needed for surgeries. Instead, I visualized myself and my cat having successful dental surgery. Now, during my trip, I had my wedding and did end up receiving more than enough to pay for all the health issues for me and my cat as a wedding gift from all guests. So the unexpected expense got taken care of. Now, this is where things get crazy, she says. When I got to our wedding destination, my parents told me about the piece of land they had bought for me when I was a baby and that this was the perfect time to sell this land. Now, I knew nothing about this land before. It truly really feels like I just won the lottery and that this land just starting started to exist all of a sudden. Without getting into all the details, I managed to sell this land despite being 99% sure that the sale wouldn't go through because I barely had any time to even meet the seller since the whole trip was spent preparing for my wedding. But in some miraculous way, I was able to sell it despite all the circumstances that would prevent the sale. I literally sold this land on the last day of my trip. I met someone who got me all the documents for the sale and even negotiated a much higher price for the sale. I had not met this person, I would be at the, at the sales office for hours trying to sell my land. The whole thing only took me two hours though and I was told it to take nine hours. When the sale went through, everyone in the office congratulated me, told me I was a lucky person, that I had so much good fortune in my life and then the sale because the sale happened the way it did. And I accepted this new identity as a lucky person because that's how I want to be perceived from now on. So when I came back home, I wanted to restart the 60 day challenge and update my goals. This is when I realized that on the column, sorry guys, please don't call me. I don't take calls in my life. This is when I realized that on the column where I wrote my financial goal for the challenge, I had accidentally put an extra zero on the 5,000. So I had accidentally put 50,000 instead of 5,000 US dollars. So now I had received exactly 50,000. She just put an extra zero in the goals at the top of the challenge, but she had no attachment to the outcome because all this time she's thinking she put 5,000. She says, I thought it was a funny accident. 
funny accident. <laughs> and I wanted to share it with the group as well as express my gratitude for you and the group because it's helped me so much. Also, not sure if this helped, but I noticed that despite me doing the 60 day challenge twice, I only really started manifesting more money the second time I did the challenge because I was in a different environment and completely focused on my friends, family, and my wedding. And I did not spend even one moment in those three weeks worrying or obsessing over money the way I used to before this trip. My God, my God, where do I begin on this testimonial? <laughs> Woo! Let me have some coffee first. What do you guys think? <laughs> You put, you put like, I want to have $5,000. That's in the money goal. You make an error. You type on an extra zero. And then you get $50,000 on, on something that, okay, it was a land her parents bought as a baby. She didn't know about it. But also, it didn't have, this land didn't have to be $50,000. It sounds like it's in a different country. Um, so this land could have been worth, uh, you know, $8,000 or $12,000, you know. But it was worth exactly fifty thousand dollars like i just it's just so unbelievable right so i think the takeaway from this is i told you guys i don't advertise the challenge that way but i do believe in in this spreadsheet that we're doing the the thing itself has some sort of i don't want to say magical okay but whatever you write down on it with the belief that you're going to get it and she had no problem believing she can have five thousand dollars in savings that's why i tell you start with small goals because you know everybody at the end of 60 days 90 days can have five thousand dollars right so she put the five thousand but because she typed something else the sheet absorbed whatever she put in there she had no attachment remember she had no she didn't know she put fifty thousand so it returns it returns right to her exactly what she put down i wish i had made the mistake in my money column by like two zeros but because i'm so analytical <laughs> this is what i tell you set your goals one time and then do not read your goals during the day don't don't read the goals during like every day right so the only thing you're going to read is the premises which you have to have posted everywhere in your car if possible on the steering wheel um but do not do not read your goals because it, when you read your goals over and over, oh, I want this in love and I want this in mind, what you're doing is you're creating this resistance. So if you just set it and forget it, and then every day, sort of, if you want, you can even hide those rows and then you're going to check them again um, at the end of 60 days. I didn't think of this until now, but I think it's a great idea. Just set them and forget them and every day just um, focus on the premise and focus on inspired affirmations. That's that's where I want you guys to be. I'm so happy. Can you guys tell when I get a testimonial like this? I'm as happy as if it happened to me. And this is why I encourage everybody who hears a testimonial be like, I'm like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for her. I'm so happy. If her, then me. Remember, if her, then me. That's the motto. But I'm also really, really happy for her. Uh, Seven says, I was reading my goals every day. Yeah, don't, don't, because it creates attachment to your goals, right? Don't. Just at the end of the challenge, sort of review your goals and be like, do I still want these things? Unless you kind of know exactly what your goals are and you're like, I, I don't want that anymore. Let's see what I miss here. I um, Let's see what I missed. And still, I still get questions on SPs. I don't know if I should even still make videos on SPs like I get not not on this live but I don't know we you guys know how I feel about SPs yeah focus on yourself um, I keep learning to drink sorry let's see you are the real money yeah exactly and I think you mean you the person who's manifesting yeah the money is a man-made concept and you are the one who's representing it via your self-worth, via holding the image of your future that implies you have money. And like I advise all my queens, never manifest money for the sake of money. Guys, we don't actually want money. What we want is what we would trade that money for, right? One thing people say is like, I want money because I want this feeling of security. And I want this feeling of peace. And I'm telling you, you can develop that feeling and money will follow 
because it will have to, because 3D will have to follow that security and peaceful feeling you have inside your heart. And you can pacify and help that feeling with whatever it is. Like maybe you can infuse a little cash flow from somewhere else just to put your mind at rest while let's say you're working on a business, whatever you need to do to, to sort of pacify and help that peace inside. But it can't not come after you develop that. And then people say, oh, I want money because I want a bigger house and I want, uh, you know, to put my kids in private school and I want um, like a nice SUV and I want all of these things. Guys, when I stayed, like I made all of this happen for myself for when, when I started this work in um, 2014, 2015. And I never did it by focusing on an amount of money. I saw there my SUV, this is my second Land Rover and I'm getting my Jaguar. Hey, this Saturday, if you guys follow my account, I got a new Jaguar. Um, so, and, and also, you know, all, all of the other things, the bigger house, the private school, the, all of this, just money followed to make this happen because this is what I focused on. You know what I mean? I wasn't focused on, I got to make 400 grand a year because then um, my mortgage would be that and the school would be that and the car would be that. And do, do you see what I mean? This is where you have to stay focused um, in terms of money. Um, if her, then me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If me, then you. The same thing. When you hear me talking about anything that's positive, if you like it, if you would like to appropriate it, say if her, then me. I'm happy for her and if her than me don't feel like why is it happening for some people and not happening for me don't don't ever feel that that will prevent you um yeah so sandra i think i answered this when manifesting should we picture ourselves having what we want when it comes to money or just affirm for the money amount i wouldn't affirm for the money amount um can I manifest good friends for my son? There's this thing about can you manifest for, for other people? And it would depend on how old your son is. They, they say that our children are within our energetic field until they're about seven or eight years old. And then they gain their own energetic field. Um, I, would, I would not stop trying, you know, for a kid as a mom, I can say that. You know, I see my son playing having fun, um, let's say maybe in a group of him and three other friends, um, just, just playing, just have this as an image in your mind, right? Remember what you define as good friends may be very different than what he defines as good friends. He might be looking for cool guys to hang out with. You might think good friends are good influences. So there's a lot of play here when it comes to kids and Logan, if you want, guys, if you want, if we have moms in, in our group or enough moms at the next private Facebook group live, we can, um, we can have a parenting one or maybe half an hour of the live can be on the parenting. Um, if you, if I don't want to work anymore, is it possible to manifest in the career section? Um, I don't think you don't want to work anymore, right? What you don't want is you don't want to work in a structure where you have a boss and do a nine to five and do whatever it is that you're doing that you're hating right now. If you're asking, can you have money without contributing and without being of use to anyone? Um, I don't believe that. You know, I, I don't believe that. Like you see, when you do something that you love, like I do a lot of my own business in 3D. I do a lot of trading as well. I do this with you guys and I enjoy everything that I do in my life. Right? Like this is work. I'm working right now. Right? I'm giving of myself. I could be at home reading a book, but I want to impart my knowledge. So you don't have to read 200 books like I did. So you can have a shorter time. You know, I started in 2014. Maybe in the next 10 years, you can be a lot further ahead than I am using this information. So don't think of, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to sit on my butt and get massages. And by the way, I haven't had massage in like a month. I got to book an appointment. But, you know, that's that's not really a focus in my life. I don't want to work. I want to work. I want to do something that makes people happy and smile and expresses my talents and increases my wealth. And, yeah, I don't want to have a boss. Forget that. Forget that. Th this is where your mind has to stay. How can I contribute such as my talent is maximized? Maximizing and marketing your talents and unique skills is is a right every single person has. This is why we're endowed with unique talents and skills because we're supposed to give it to the world in service to the world. 
Um, can I be your simp? Nice one. By the way, I don't think good guys are simps at all. I hate that term. Um, yeah, if you if you um, go through my content content or you're familiar with my content, um, we're we're all about PPP man. If you don't know what that is, you can follow my content. I want my daughter to heal from a traumatic brain. I take care of her full time, and it's very hard. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. I don't think I want to take the conversation in that direction. In the book, it's it's a very um, well-known manifestation book, Think and Grow Rich. The author talks about how he healed his son in, in chapter one, healed his son, helped his son was born without the ears. Like he, he was missing the ears and the doctors told him he'll never hear again. And he spends like maybe 10 pages writing the story on how he's healed his son and how slowly by slowly he made his son believe that he can hear again. So if if it may be helpful for you to read that story and take some inspiration and, you know, I'm blessing your daughter for health. Um, I would love a live on parenting and how to teach kids to manifest. OK, let's do it. Let me write this down. Because I have to structure it. And it has to be one of our private lives. Um, do you have any tattoos? What do you guys think? It's off topic. Do you think I have any tattoos, Mike? How many tattoos do you think I have? I guess my lives are not really interesting. Huh? Like people are asking me all sorts of dumb questions. Um... Should we do something special during solar eclipse? I don't do anything in terms of um, the moon, the sun, astrology, um, tarot. I don't. I don't do any of that stuff. Special numbers. We have one ritual in our group that has to do the new moon. We just. Um, but it's not really about the new moon so much as it is about keeping an exact date, grounding date, on us doing our fasting and manifestation together. Uh, What is the best technique to detach? You see yourself more important than your goal. You see your happiness um, and uh, self-worth more important than the goal, especially with uh, when you're manifesting men. Definitely when you're manifesting money as well. Uh, Do you think private school or public schools for my son? Um, guys, I don't know. I, um, my daughter started out in, in public school and, um, in grade two, I began because, you know, like both me and her dad went to public school and were completely okay. Um, but the school system is very different now. So, um, I, I was by grade two, I was like, she cannot continue in, in the public school system. There were cracks in the public school system that were very, very, and there were behavior cracks, behavior from other kids that you know the school system couldn't do anything about like she had a crazy kid in her class that brought dead mice and put them on the desks of other kids the school system couldn't do anything about it eventually they got him a full-time person to be with him in the schoolyard because he was hurting other kids and I was like I can't you know what I mean like I only have one child I can't and I'm not even gonna talk about academics now you know so that's, that's the problem is the schools are so powerless. And because of that, they they gave up, I think, like the teachers gave up also. Right. Um, yes, on tattoos. I don't have any tattoos. Not that that's anybody's business, but for people who are curious. Um, what would happen when we revise a memory that has never happened? Will that make us insane? How can you revise a memory? Oh, if you revise a memory like it's never happened. I, I tend to give different meaning to events than I gave in the past if it's an unpleasant memory. This is also called forgiving. Okay, in religion and practicality. So I sort of, I took something the wrong way. Some person hurt me. I, I give a different meaning to that event. 
this is what they were going through at the time. This was me at the time. I made the decision with the information I had at the time. I wasn't as good as I am today. I forgive him. I forgive me. I forgive, you know, like there's friends that are no longer in my life. Um, so I, I sort of changed the meaning, the perspective via which I saw an event as opposed to try to erase it from my memory. Um, what do you think of grounding mat trying to stay barefoot on the ground for some time every day? Look, I think this is our natural, our natural state is to be, you know, the human body needs to be on earth. On, on the ground. So I can't, I don't think it would hurt. I actually bought a grounding sheet years ago. I slept on it for like a month or so. It didn't really, I didn't feel any different. I didn't, you know, so for me, I didn't, but you know, when I love being on the beach, walking on the beach, I'm very much in awareness when I touch the ground. I do walk in my backyard. It's just that living in Canada, I can only do that for three months a year, for maybe four months a year at the most. But if you have the opportunity to do it more, do it. But don't do it because you're like, now I'm doing this thing where I'm doing my grounding and it's one more thing to do. You know, because then your system is going to struggle against it. You have to actually enjoy that. You have to enjoy, let's say, if you have a backyard, just having your coffee and just walking around, you know, a few meters forward, a few meters back. And it, only if you enjoy it. I wouldn't recommend doing any practice that you don't enjoy. All practices that I do, I really enjoy them. Ah, uh, Mona, how can I work with self-sabotage? <coughs> I think that's where we all are. It's only by understanding your paradigms, by doing all the work, by doing your dreams, understanding where the blocks are. Remember, your, your ego does not want you to change. Your will wants you to change, your spirit. But your ego, your personality, the way your brain is structured, it's completely fine with the way you are. And it doesn't want to change. And this is where the self-sabotage comes. Now, the will, if you can direct the will to stay in awareness all the time, this is where your power is. It's like, like you're saying, oh, I'm doing that thing now, self-sabotage. I'm going to do something else. I'm going, I'm going to choose. And it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I was driving with my mom in the weekend and I don't know, she got upset about something that I knew she shouldn't have gotten upset over. And I'm like, oh, I got to apologize just to make her feel good. But I felt like I was right, you know? So I'm like, why do I have to apologize? You know, and that's, my ego, my intellectual ego understanding, she's, why doesn't she have the capacity to understand what I'm, and, and then I was like, I came back to that peace and calm, and I'm like, I choose a different outcome for the rest of our afternoon together, and I said, mom, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna say that anymore, if it bothers you, I'm really sorry, I'm telling you, saying that when I knew I was right, it's hard, it's very hard, but I made a choice, and it comes in the small things, in the small things you don't you really like that don't matter, right? It comes in the small things, but you have to do it consistently. You constantly have to go against this ego. Why does it matter if I was right? Why does it matter? Think, how can whatever I say next shape the future that's going to come and make that decision based on that, not based on your feeling. You're feeling like you're angry in that second. You're, you're, you can't trust that feeling to make a decision. You always have to question your feelings. I'm not talking about inspired action when you have a good feeling about something where you have a gut feeling that something's wrong. I'm talking about the daily feelings that you're feeling. You can't, you can't go by that. You have to think, if I act on this feeling, is it going to give me a good day, a good rest of the day? Am I going to get one step closer to my goal or one step further from my goal? You understand? And your ego is like, you're humiliating yourself, but you're like, Mr. Ego or Miss Ego, I don't, I don't really like you, you know, like you haven't served me so well in the last 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, you haven't served me so well. So you know what? Me, the will is going to start making the decisions from here on out. Oh. What type of energy? What type of energy is it when you have questions and the other person answers them without you asking? Um, you are um, connected to the matrix, right? Remember like the matrix, they call it the matrix. I call it the formless substance and we're all connected. We're all connected to it, right? It's just our awareness and degree of connection 
is is very different at different points in time depending on your awareness depending on your practices depending if you want to adhere to it or not it's also a choice it doesn't mean you're no longer in the matrix or in the form of substance it means that the form of substance does not act upon you as it would upon other people but when you are connected you can all of a sudden transmit what you want and the form of substance forms in a way that it returns to you what you want. That's what manifestation and reality creation is. And that includes answers from the people, right? You have a question, the matrix finds the easiest way for, for an answer to come to you and it might be the person that's next to you. Okay. I've been a mom all of my adult life. I need to find something else to get into and I struggle with. I, I think when, you, when you've raised your kids, queen, what you can do is always ask yourself, what brings me joy? Like, what is it, you know, you've gone through life now. So you understand that there's certain activities and things. Maybe it's talking to people. Maybe it's being alone. Maybe it's whatever it is for you. You have to follow that joy, I would say. If, if you're fortunate enough to have a lifestyle where you can follow your joy with no, no financial worries and stresses in, in terms of, you know, survival, survival, right? If you have everything you need to survive, your house, your food, and you have this incredible ability to pursue your passions, that's where you should focus without, without wondering what the world thinks or what other people think, or that's where you find what you're meant to do. How can I get out of comparison? I see everyone succeeding and it's frustrating me. If her, then me. Every time you're on Instagram, if her, then me. And um, one tip that I gave my queens, I'm going to share with everybody this one tip, is you can never compare yourself with people who are not like you. What does that mean? Well, when I was a young girl and growing up, I thought, you know, darker skin was the standard of beauty. I thought Halle Berry, I thought the Brazilian supermodels, all of those people who look nothing like me were beautiful. And so this made me feel like shit, right? Growing up, I was like 16, 17, fake tanning, doing all those things. And then I realized it's not, I'm never going to be that, right? I'm never going to, and then I'll always feel ugly if I compare myself with people who are completely unlike me. And, and as you go through life, you can also not compare yourself with, with people who are much younger or much older than you, right? If you see a very rich woman and she's 65, how did she make it? You know, or you see a very young girl who's beautiful, she's 22, she has a Pilates body. You, you can't compare yourself only to people who look like you, come from the same background as you, who are successful. And then when you look at them, you say, if her, then me. The way the universe, God, um, the way she was able to do it or God gave to her the same way it will be given to me. What is this? So your kid beats up. I like our different topics today. Your kid beats up other people's kids, but it's the school's fault. That's logical. Well, what I meant there is the school couldn't do anything about that violent kid. Right. They couldn't kick him out of school. They, there was no because he has the right to education. But he was obviously like something was mentally not okay with him, right? So my child is now suffering seeing this and watching it. And even if she's not a victim of him, she might be one day, but it's also very disturbing as opposed to this wouldn't happen in a private school. That's all, that's all the point I was making. It's not that it's the school's fault. It's, the school can't stop it. And so now you as a parent, you have a choice. What are you going to do? <sighs> I visit the same place in dreams that doesn't exist in my 3D. Any thoughts? That's amazing. It's amazing. I think we should talk to our subconscious often. I don't know if I told you guys, I started to do hypnosis for the first time in my life. And I'm going to actually have my second session tomorrow. And I'm doing it for a specific reason. Um, but um, I think when you're having these dreams and when you're seeing these other places, you have to ask your subconscious what it is about. As opposed to you trying to interpret it through the intellect, you can you can say to your subconscious as you're falling asleep, take me back to this place, but show me more. I want to know more. I want to know why I'm shown this. I love this. Give me a feeling in my dream that 
I can make a connection with what I'm supposed to do next. How does this help me achieve my goals? Always back and forth, your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is not the same as the matrix and the formless substance. It's a connection to the formless substance. So I think you're part of my group. I, I'm not sure, but you know, we had a meditation on dreams last week when you walked us the corridor of your subconscious and you dissolve just just go through that meditation again for this Wednesday because we're going to have dream time together again. Um, once you can control what you react and what you engaged with, life really changes. A hundred percent. The biggest truth that I have found out experientially because when I was starting this, this information wasn't out. So when I was starting looking into this seriously, 2014, 2015, I had to learn this the hard way. Once you can control what you react to and how you engage with 3D, life really changes. And key point, you can't react and engage with the same way as you did so far. Because if you do, you'll get more of what happened yesterday and the day before. So you actually have to change how you interact with the world. Uh... Let's see. Did I miss anything? Controlling emotion is so difficult. You have It's difficult when you associate yourself with emotion, which is what we have been taught to do. We have been taught to associate ourselves with emotion. This is, this is erroneous. We're not our emotion. Our emotion stems from the way we think about the world. So if I think the world should happen a certain way, and all of a sudden, I run, into, I run into an issue that shows me differently. Now I'm angry. Now I'm like, or I'm confused, or I'm upset, or I feel powerless. So all of this happens because I think the world should work a certain way. It's just my paradigm. How can I perceive this event differently? How can I distance myself from that situation? Guys, this work, even though it's simple, it's not easy. I say that. I've been saying that for years since I've had this account. I think I opened it in March of last year. Um, it's, it's the same message. This work is, is simple to comprehend intellectually and for some really difficult to implement intellectually, the, the implement in, in day to day life, because it's, you can comprehend what you need to do, but doing it, it's completely different than understanding that you need to do it or how to do it. Uh, let's see. I'm really interested in attending one of Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreats. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. So I'm going again this year. <laughs> I already booked mine. I'm not going to say on a, on a public life which one I'm attending, but I'm attending one. Um, I went to his advanced retreat. I was very familiar with his work. And um, I went to, like, I, I was, like, already practicing a lot of things from being online and taking some online courses with him. And I wanted to go in person, so I went to a seven-day advanced retreat this is how I got this idea to make this group. And um, because the things that I experienced in this advanced retreat really put a different spin on, like it took my, my work to a next level. Okay. So his retreats are unbelievable. Um, I have only been to one obviously, but I'm assuming they're all the same. Um, they're not cheap. The hotel is not cheap. The whole experience cost me about seven grand with, you know, flights and, and hotel and his fees, I think was about 2300 US dollars. Um, but it's it's totally transformational. So it just depends what you see this invest like for me investing in myself, investing in my well-being. It's I don't need to buy clothes, uh, bags. I don't have any of that stuff because I put value on something completely different. Um, and and so for me it was an amazing investment to make. I would also go on my own. I'm going on my own. I went on my own. I wouldn't go with a friend. I wouldn't go with a spouse because what you need to do after this intense days, like the days are like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They're like 12 hours, 11 to maybe even 13 hours. One morning we had a meditation start at like 5.30 a.m. He is on stage nonstop. The only time he was not on stage was when we had some medical doctors present third party verified results because they do all this measurement. Dr. Joe Dispenza is a medical doctor and he um, he keeps his reputation based on the fact that he does all the scientific experiments that validate his work. 
but none of his work is done on science, like in my opinion, right? The connection that he has with the unknown, the connection that the things he's manifesting, the crazy stories that are not in his books and are not in his lectures, but they he shares with his audience. There's no filming. You're not allowed to film. There's people walking back and forth in the row and watching if you have your cell phone on. You're not allowed to record. They're very diligent about that. He says some crazy stories, you know, and he's he's a practitioner of very intense like I don't think he does a retreat once a month I think or maybe once every six weeks I don't know if he works too much in between I'm sure he has at least two weeks where he doesn't contact the world I'm sure I'm, I don't know for a fact because the results he's achieving and interchanging he's achieving and the stories he's talking about he said how he was one time he was um, camping alone um, on, on top of a mountain somewhere and he was in he stepped out of his van and um, he was meditating and he thought to himself, this is from his words, right? But again, it's not in his books. Or... So he's on stage telling the story. And he says, um, I had a bottle. I remember during my meditation that I had a bottle of wine in my van and I was going to consume it that evening. But I was like, you know, a nice French bread would go really well with that wine. Too bad I didn't take any. And he says, as I'm meditating there, a loaf of French bread appears and hits me on the shoulder or like somewhere in this area and falls like next to me. So then like the whole audience, like it's 1800 people in the room listening to the story. were like, you know, and he's like, yeah. So I was like, I looked at it and I was shocked, of course. And I looked around and there was nobody around and I just took it, put it in my pocket and went and consumed it with my wine. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, what else are you going to do? <laughs> but I, I, I really believe these are the results you can achieve when you are at that level. You can do reality creation of manifesting physical, physical objects. And, you know, this is what the stories in the Bible are all about, right? It's, it's not if Joe Dispenza can manifest a loaf of bread. It's not that hard to believe that another man did the same thing like 2000 years ago, right? Like it's not, they just operate by different rules. They access different rules. So this is why, you know, like he's, he's, he's a scientist and he, he would not be able, I don't think, to be so popular and have this platform if his whole um, stories were like this crazy stories that he's experienced. And I'm sure he's telling us very little of what he's experienced because he doesn't want to sound like a lunatic. Um, but he has access to something completely different. So I would definitely recommend in conclusion his, um, his, his retreat. You will feel very different in a room of 1800 people who are doing these practices. The music is very, very loud. It's very hypnotic. Um, there's healing sessions. You participate. You can register to be a healy or a healer. Um, it's, it's all just very, very interesting. And it's just being more connected to each other. I, I don't think I've ever heard somebody saying this was a waste of time or a bad investment. Uh, let's see. I saw a man who looked identical to Joe last Friday. I was shocked. Oh, maybe it's your sign that you should go. I just want to go back enough to see if I missed any questions. Um, dreamt that I shook his hand and a couple of days later, I got a free copy of Becoming Supernatural. This may be another, another one of those signs. He manifested a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah. Said from, you know, so, so help me. Okay, he's on stage telling the story. And of course, nobody can film him telling the story. And he would never... But there is a video of him. I think there's only one video. It's about a five-minute video on YouTube if they didn't remove it. And Google Joe Dispenza Blue Beings. And in that five-minute clip, he's saying there are these this beings, these outer beings that sometimes come in his meditation sessions to watch, to see what they're we're doing because the consciousness is raised it's palpable you know my body felt very different during these meditations that you do on the floor with 1800 people next to you some people can't handle it they start screaming and it's it's very like if you're not used to this right it's it's very like disturbing sometimes you know because they can't hold they can't contain their energy um and and so he's saying like there's there's beings overseeing this. So make sure you go with the light, you go in, in protection, you go in, you know, and there's, there's healings. 
that happened at his. But I don't know. I didn't go for any physical issue, so I don't know. And all the healings that he does, he does brain scans and measurements, so he proves it scientifically somehow. Um, I'm sure just to stay, to stay um, respectable. If he can, so can I. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice? Like I've manifested things like this, but not to fall on my on my head. One time I was thinking about a specific food, and I was like, so thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna tell uh, my fiance to like buy it tonight. Maybe we can order it, or you know, it's not it's not really on Uber Eats, so it's very specific food. And then when I got home that day it was there and then he was like oh i was thinking we might enjoy this tonight so i manifested it that way right like i he goes like i was in the area and i thought i'd pick this up it was from an ethnic store and i was like i was thinking of ordering this tonight you know but so the universe heard me and he was in the area he was like i'm gonna go in and buy it and just surprise mona and then meanwhile he doesn't know i made him do that with my mind <laughs> so I manifested things that way, but I didn't manifest them to fall out of the sky and into my hand. I'm, I'm not at Joe Dispenza's level right now. He, he puts a lot of work into his practice, though. I'm sure he does at least five hours a day of, of practices, I'm sure. I'm sure. So also during the retreats, just to um, finalize this point, during his retreats, he is on stage nonstop. So it's him. There's no fillers. It's him. Oh, I'm your Joe Dispenza. That's so, like, such a compliment. Like, nobody's ever said something like this to me. Thank you, Logan. Thank you. I wish. I wish. But we're getting there. We're all getting there. You know, if we keep keeping the practice and keep on doing the practice for the highest benefit of all and with harm to none. Um, I've had experience. Rachel says, or Raquel says, I've had experience in meditation that I feel crazy sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Because... The world, like we were told it works based on ABCD principle, but it's very possible the moment we believe those principles to be different. By the way, there's this show I started that's absolutely fascinating. If you're into esoteric, please watch the show. And it's called, it's new on Netflix, it's called The Three Body Problem. Anybody heard of it? Anybody started it? I, I We watched four episodes. It's all about quantum physics. And um, the story is like there is this other culture, alien culture, what have you. And they put this game and the game is indistinguishable from reality. And I, I don't want to give away too much, but it will make you think about the experiences you can have or the way another world with a different rule set can operate. And in this other world, they have three suns and they're caught in the gravitational. Like, what if our world didn't operate on those rules? And it tells you this is what would happen if the world had different rules. It's I love thinking about stuff like that. And I love thinking it's possible for the world I live in to bend the rules more in my favor or more in the favor of, you know, people in general. More in the, you know, like, what if we don't have to work the way they told us we have to work for money to do something we don't like to do you know i mean in religion we are told we have to put in our effort and contribute but it doesn't tell us you got to be in this nine to five to have the right to live on earth so it, it's just what if what if that's not true what if it's not true that it's a hookup culture what if it's true that there's a person just like you waiting for the right person and all of this that that messages from society you have to question them you have to question them a lot and be like do they really need to apply to me? Does it need to apply to me? It doesn't. Um, I think Jose, Jose, uh, Jose Silva method is similar to what Dispenza talk about. I'm more familiar with Silva. So guys, everybody should read this book. If it's not on my Amazon books to read list, I'm going to put it there. It's in my bio, all the books that you should probably be reading. It's called um, The Silva Method of Mind Control. Um, and what um this is full of exercises and it's written in a different time right more like the beginning of the 21st century beginning to mid i think i think he was writing in the 30s and 40s if i'm not mistaken um but the woman who worked for him helen hensel she won 5000 contests and people saying she did that by learning his method now i read his book um i haven't won 5000 contests Maybe if you infuse yourself with a lot of the knowledge there, but it's 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 all work. It's all practice. Like one chapter, he tells you this is how you can envision yourself 
inside the wall of your house, coming out with a banana, with an orange, all this exercise is going to take a long time to do because you got to train your mind to think differently, to train your consciousness to experience different things. And his point is when you have your consciousness experiencing all this different state, then you'll be able to access whatever state you want. That's the summary of the Jose Silva method of mind control. But you got to train your mind to be there. Most people won't go through this work. Most people will be like, how can I manifest $5,000, the job of my dream over the next two days? Right? Let's see. So who else is going to Joe Dispenza? I got to show him and send him this clip and be like, I think I earned a free attendance <laughs> for all the <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um... I'm not going to do that, but I, I, I think you guys should seriously consider if you're into this work. Um, this past month, I've manifested many things, especially food. I think I'm cra when I think I'm craving something. Yeah, but probably not fell out of the sky, right? Like Dr. Joe. Um, how can we heal ourselves from manifested illness? What a great question, because you know you've manifested it. So if you know you've manifested it, do the opposite. The same way you induce your illness, you're going to manifest it away. You induce your illness by focusing on it. You're going to manifest it away by focusing on its opposite. The opposite is not the healing of the illness, is the non-existence of illness and perfect health. Uh, someone would cook or buy the food. Yeah, those are the way we mostly manifest, right? That's like level two. Somebody, we make somebody else who's who has more access to what we want, think of it and produce it for us. What's the name of the video you're talking about, Joe Dispenza? I think I mentioned him in several of my lives. I don't know if I did a video, especially for him. Oh, oh, the name of the video that I was talking, Google on YouTube, Joe Dispenza plus Blue Beings. And I hope you find it. Uh, it's mind blowing. I dreamt about last night. Oh, the three body problem on Netflix. Yeah, that's that's it's really good. I got to episode four. Don't ruin it for me. Um, I'll put you down as a referral. Um, OK, I'll take this one more. Is it OK to splurge shop knowing money will come and feeling good about it, even if the funds aren't in 3D? It that the answer to that question has to do with your paradigm, your paradigm about money is important in answering that question. So, for example, for me, that would never be okay because I would not be able to maintain a state of peace inside knowing I'm spending all this like extra money on things that I know aren't even valuable. Like, let's say I want to attend the Dr. Joe Dispenza seminar and because I know it's so valuable to do that and I don't have the money to do it, I would put it on my credit card. I would be able to keep the faith that I'll be able to pay that because I know it's good for me. But to go on a shopping spree for purses and shoes, I would feel like shit if I didn't have the money to pay for it. So it all depends how it makes you feel inside when you're doing that. So the fact that you're asking me, is it okay to splurge shop? Is it okay? Right? Or is your being telling you it's not okay? You need this manifestation guru to tell you it's okay for you to do it. That's your ego wants all of those things. But is it okay? What's your will saying? What's your intuition saying? See, that's the difference. If you have to ask, it shows death. Yeah, exactly. Guys, I, I, I really wouldn't. I, I, would, I would drop my attachments to all these things that happen that, that hold no value. Like shopping sprees, what value is, is in that, right? Remember when I was envisioning myself in a bigger house, okay, that has value because once I got it, that value has appreciated also. So I knew that getting a bigger house right away will be able to appreciate more over, over time than the townhouse I was in. Putting my kid in private school that also had value, the value, the way I defined value. But if I bought a pair of shoes for $1,000, just won't feel good about it that that can't hold its value you know it just it just can't okay let's put our hands together for the i gotta go 
for the 369 I am a winner. This takes 30 seconds. We're tapping to uh, alert the nervous system to the following affirmation. I am a winner. And then I'll see you again um, later on this week uh, or I'll see you in the group. One breath together. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.